praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad that you have joined another episode of Bridging the Gap. I am your host, Pastor Nate Brozier, and it's always exciting to come to you, whether you're watching this on YouTube or maybe you're tuning in on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcast avenue that you can listen to this. I'm so grateful and thankful that you're watching and listening uh, every time that we post or myself post here. And so I'm just excited. I understand we just come off of our Easter weekend. Many of us have uh, had a festival weekend last past two weeks ago now. Uh, and I'm just thinking about where we've been celebrating the resurrection or the death of our Savior, the sacrifice that he had went through so that you and I may have life and now have it more abundantly because of what Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Calvary. So we're it's, it, we're ever for, forever grateful for that. And so I'm just excited. I am anticipating this coming summer, what's going to happen. And so leading into that, I just want to get started and I want to uh, present this to you. But if you have social media, go ahead and just uh, share this broadcast to your friends on your network. And without further ado, let's get started. Today, I want to talk to you simply on the lines of understanding your purpose. Let me say that one more time. Understanding your purpose. We always have some thoughts that go through our mind. What is my purpose here on earth? What is my duty here? Now that I am here, I exist. Am I existing to to exist? Am I just here to exist? Or is there a purpose in my life? You know, we've always heard statements from, whether it be from our, pa our pastors, our friends, our parents, teachers, they would always try to push us towards what we're supposed to be. And so this is kind of that purpose thought process. And so today I want to simply just talk to you about understanding your purpose. Last episode, we talked about having family first, the importance of putting your family over every other thing, not God. God is first, but family comes first before everything else, ministry, work, all that. So that's our purpose as a, as a husband. That's our purpose as a father. And so we're going to begin to understand a little bit better today about understanding your purpose. So I want you just to sit back and understand. If you have your Bible, I'm going to be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 through 8. New Living Translation is what I'll be reading. And it reads this way. Then Moses called for Joshua. And as all Israel watched, he said to him, he said this to Joshua, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grants of land. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will... Pers I like this. I like this right here. Look what Moses said. Do not be afraid or discouraged, Joshua, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fall or he will, excuse me, he will neither fail you nor abandon you. So what we have to see here is that God was showing, he was setting precedent through Moses to speak over Joshua that I will not leave you nor fail you. And I like this, even this last word that Moses said over Joshua, that the Lord will not abandon you. Oftentimes we feel, we get in our feels, I'll say it like that. We, we get in our emotions, we get in our feelings a lot, and we, we begin to look at ourselves in that proverbial mirror, which I talk about a lot. We look, in our, we look at ourselves and we begin to identify what we can or cannot do. Now, I can imagine Joshua, who was walking with Moses this whole time, who has witnessed this man do miracle signs and wonders. My God, he led the children of Israel out of slavery. He witnessed this, this with his own eyes. He witnessed this same man speak to Pharaoh, 
Not everybody had that opportunity. Not everybody had the ability or, or the boldness to even attempt to do that because of the fear of their life. But God used Moses and Joshua was watching this man be used by God to do exploits and wonders and miracles and signs. The same guy, Moses, who would take his rod and he struck it into the side of a rock and water would flow out. The same Moses who would take that same rod and would cast it forth into the sea or, or, or put it on the edge of the sea and watch the sea part right in half. He defied all logics of science, so that, that's not possible. But yet God used this man to do wonders, signs, and miracles. Now Joshua could have said to himself, God, I don't know about this. I'm not sure I'm capable of doing this as well. And imagine he could have said, I fall short of even what Moses can do. Moses was this, Moses was that, Moses could do this. I witnessed Moses do that. I can imagine what was going through Joshua's mind as he's walking up that, that mount and, and to take him to his last final resting place, Moses that is. I can imagine Joshua even coming down from that mountain and thinking to himself, Moses is gone. Now I'm supposed to be the one to lead these children, to lead these people. Imagine the horror that would go over his mind, the fear of the uncertainty of not sure that you can even function in this, in this uh, position. Ah, maybe I, I, I can relate here. Maybe you watch and can't understand that or relate that. But when, when you're given a position or position is brought to you, that is a fearful thought, especially when the person that you're replacing or taking over, let's say it that way, had done such great work and miracles and had done great, uh, a great job. It's not that, that he lost his job because of lack of, uh, of, of ability. It was his time. His time was over. Now you must take the mantle and run with it. Now let's look at what Joshua says. Later down, he's, he goes and he, he, he begins to write a song to Moses before all this. And, and, and there were some things put into the Ark of the Covenant for the children of Israel to carry. And uh, a song of be strong, be courageous, uh, and, and things like that went on. And now here Joshua's coming down from the mountain. And we hear Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Here's what God said to Joshua. Because you obviously have to understand that he had to have possibly felt some insecurities of his own. He had possibly had probably thought to himself that I don't know that I could do this. And look what God speaks to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Look what he tells Joshua. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land that I, the Lord, have given you. I don't know about you, but immediately there would be some boldness and excitement that would just begin to go through my bloodstream to understand that God has spoken a word that even he hadn't even spoke to Moses yet. He said, whatever your foot treads upon, wherever your feet set foot upon, you will have it. My God, faith began to download into Joshua that very moment. He began to do what this podcast is saying. He began to understand his purpose. You're watching this at home right now. Maybe you're driving down the road or you're just wherever. You're listening to this podcast and I want to encourage you. God is with you. God is for you. And if God be with you, and if God be 
for you, then the Bible says, who can be against you? Well, we understand that Satan, his in, the enemy is out to devour, seeking whom he may destroy. We understand that is who is against us, but we also need to understand on who we serve. When we begin to understand that we serve an awesome God, we serve an almighty God, we serve Yahweh, we serve Jehovah, then he will fight our battles for us. He would lead us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. He's that kind of God. And here's the thing. When we begin to understand our purpose, then there's nothing we shall fear. When we begin to understand the very purpose that we are created to be on this earth, then listen, we're ready to jump through a hoop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, as the kids song goes. Oh, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. You feel like you can do almost anything. I said hoop earlier. You checked me on that. I meant I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Because when you understand the purpose of God, then we can feel like we can do anything. We are not afraid of anything. Then we can go as even what 1 Timothy said, that I have not. God said he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Listen, God has created us. He has fearfully and wonderfully made you and I that when we begin to understand our purpose, then we should never allow the enemy to discourage us and tell us never to do something. When God is for us, then who can be against us? My God, this is encouraging for me. We're getting ready to take on a, a new challenge in ministry, so to speak, for myself personally. And I have to feed this stuff into myself. What am I feeding? I'm not just feeding encouraging words. I'm feeding the word of the Lord. I am understanding the purpose that God has created me on this earth. And I pray right now that you begin to understand the purpose that God has created you to function in and be a part. When we begin to understand that very purpose, then we begin to understand why we're here on this earth. And what is my next step? What is my, whatever challenge comes my way, what is my next step, God? Lead me, Lord, as the song goes, I will follow. Now, when God is leading us, he won't abandon us. He won't, he won't neglect us. When God is leading you, he won't just throw you into the fire and see if you burn. But he's always made a way of escape. He's always made room for his provision. He's always made a way when there seemed to be no way. My God, understand purpose. Well, what is purpose, you may ask? Purpose is simply something set up as an object or end to be attained. Listen, you have to understand the very thing that is set before you. God understands, God knows you. He knows your beginning to your end. He knows. He said the very hairs of our head, which if you look at mine, are numbered. And when they grow in, you can count them. Now, let's not be all too funny. I'm not completely bald. But understand that God understands who we are. He knows every detail about you and I. So if God knows that much about you and I, then therefore he's going to know what we need. He's going to know how to battle certain things. We're not in this thing empty-handed. God produces. When he gives us the word, he gives us a two-edged sword. When he allows us to, when he gives us his word, we, we are able to speak his word over our circumstances. We're able to speak the word of God over whatever the enemy throws our way. Because the word of God is what, as David said, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. What is that simply meaning? That means when I feel like times that I'm lost, when I'm not understanding the very thing that I'm supposed to be doing or my purpose on earth, listen, his word becomes a lamp unto my feet. 
He, he, he directs my path. He becomes a light in darkness. The word of God becomes light in my darkness. My darkest hours, I speak his name. I speak his word. I, re, I, I release the word of God over whatever I'm dealing with. Because his promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. So to understand the purpose, we have to understand that this is is an end to be attained. What is our finale? Here's the finale to our purpose. When you come to a place and your purpose is ended, here's when you know God's done with you. Your finale is death. Your finale, this is the end. When God says it is over, then guess what? It is over. Purpose has ended on earth and that dying breath. Listen, just because you die doesn't mean that that vision dies. Just because you die, it doesn't mean that everything that you've worked and you've built and you've poured into other people, that that all dies as well. That vision is finished. No, look what God spoke to Moses. He said, listen, listen, tell Joshua, prepare Joshua. And God began to tell Joshua things. Listen, be strong, be courageous for the same thing that I told Moses, you shall do as well. Oh God. Understand your purpose. My purpose is only here for such a small, minute time. Hey, listen, God may come back tomorrow, but listen, also God may not come back for 60 years. I don't know that I'll be around in 60 years. I would be 107. I may be, but if I'm around in 60 years, I don't know how good I'll be physically because my body would be dwindling away around that time. But what shall I do in the next 25 years? I need to pour in to people as much as I can. This is the purpose. This is the vision. And this is what we are supposed to do. God showed us through his word how he took Moses and Moses began to prepare people. He began to take some uh, people like Joshua and pour into and, and allow them to fulfill the vision. And then God began to speak things to Joshua to enhance the vision that he even had for them. Listen, you can only go so far, but we have to understand this. And first and foremost, you have to understand that God has given you a purpose here on this earth. I'm so troubled when I hear the amount of people committing suicide. Even pastors are committing suicide these days. Even church folk are committing suicide. There's something missing here. We're not understanding the purpose that God has created us to walk in, to operate in. Now, I just want to encourage you today. Understand the purpose that God has for you. Don't give up on it. Don't abort it. But God has a purpose and a plan for you to fulfill. You just got to understand that God, if you lead me, I will follow. God, if you direct my steps, then I know the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you even when I feel like everybody's coming against me. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to understand my purpose. Even when people leave me, I'm going to understand that there's a purpose that needs to be fulfilled. Even when my, when my family turns their back on me, I'm, I understand my purpose here on earth. Even when things don't go the way that I thought they should go, I'm not gonna blame you, God, but I'm gonna understand there's a purpose behind all of this. So I wanna pray for you today that you begin to understand your purpose and you begin to identify that God has something better for me. And God has big plans in store for me. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone watching right now that, Lord, you'll begin to identify to them what their purpose is on earth. And maybe there's those that are watching right now. They know their purpose. They know what they're called to do, but they've been running from that very existence. They've been running from that very purpose that you've been preparing them for, for such a time as today. God, I pray for them right now that they begin to let go, 
of every barrier that tries to prevent them to, from pressing through as you did, as that woman with the issue of blood, as she pressed through the thronging crowd, even though there was a crowd among her, God, I, I pray right now that I encourage them right now that they will press through even through the toughest circumstances, through the toughest situation that they're facing today, whatever obstacles they're going through. God, I pray encouragement right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hey, I thank you again for watching another week's episode of Bridging the Gap. Until then, I'll see you again. This is Pastor Nate. God bless you.